where I actually don't change my mindset from passage to discrete. Whereas in chem phys and bio biochem, I, I kind of, I do change my mindset going into those discretes. Call back for some more MCAT podcasts, continuing our breakdown of Blueprint MCAT Full Length 1. We are hanging out in the psych soch section. It's the hardest thing for me to say. Uh, that and rural. Rural and psych soch section are like my my downfall. Um, we're, we're nearing the end, right? We, we've been through a couple passages now. Um, a few passages, three passages, and now on to our first discrete section of the psych soch section. What do you do in, in terms of mindset when you, when you turn the page to <laughs> figuratively turn the page to this discrete section, do you do anything different with psych soch compared to the, the chem phys or bio biochem? Uh, I, I do treat these discretes a little differently, um, uh, because I, feel like a lot of the passage-based questions in psych -soch are almost kind of pseudo-discrete. Mm -hmm. Then I feel like these discrete ones, they a lot of times give you huge question stems. So it's like almost like a mini passage. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I feel actually like they have a very similar kind of way I work through them, um, where I actually don't change my mindset from passage to discrete. Whereas in chem phys and bio biochem, I, I kind of, I do change my mindset going into those discretes. Um, but they can just be very long, like mini passages is almost how I think about them mm -hmm. for a psych -soch sometimes. Well, that sounds like a ton of fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So instead of passages, we get little mini passages and supposedly need to fly through those as well. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into question 14. I'll go ahead and read this first one here. A teenage boy believes strongly that success in playing football makes him more, quote, manly, and he judges his male peers by their knowledge of enthusiasm for and skill with football. Whenever the boy calls his friend a sissy for not liking football, his dad laughs. The boy most likely developed this view as a result of which of the following forms of feedback from his environment. Roman numerals. Yay. Roman numeral one. Viewing many television programs that associate successful males with football. Two. Failing to earn membership on a football team at school. Three. Operant conditioning. Or Roman numeral four. Gender schemata. All right, and then our answer choice is here. So if we want to try to use something, you mentioned 50-50 earlier. Um, and so would, would Roman numeral four here be your 50-50 because it's only an answer choice C and D? Yeah, that would be the one I would, uh, I would try to look at first. Okay, so Roman numeral four is gender schemata. And, and like, I don't remember what gender schemata is, but obviously... It's a very enticing answer because, ooh, gender, men, manly, oh, it's all about gender. And so I'm going to leave that one in play for now because I don't necessarily remember exactly what it is. Uh, and I'm going to go straight to answer choice three with operant conditioning because this one to me seems to give the answer away um, with where in the past the the question stem it says whenever the boy calls his friend a sissy for not liking football his dad laughs and so he's getting that positive feedback which i believe is what operant conditioning is like being having that that kind of um uh kind of feedback loop there to be conditioned to do that so i think three is right four potentially is right but answer choice three is only in room uh, in answer D. So I'm going to go with D and not even look at the other ones. Yeah. And you'd be right with that. Um, so you're absolutely right. I like to go and pick the one that is in like half of them so I can eliminate half off the bat. Mm -hmm. This question specifically though, I actually don't do that um, because I do have a background in some applied behavior analysis. Uh, and so right when I saw operant conditioning, 
I knew like, oh, I know this like the back of my hand. Yep. We have a behavior and a response and that's like a positive reinforcer. Okay, it's operant conditioning is happening. And so I actually on this one, I, I break from my, <laughs> my typical strategy. Uh, and I think that's okay if there's like a content area that you really know well that pops up in a Roman numeral question um, that you really don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about. Um, yeah. And so you have three. It's the only one that, uh, Answer Choice D is the only one that has it. So, yep. Nope. All right. Got lucky there. Question <laughs> 15. So, a social constructionism critique of gender would most likely assert which of the following? A, a single female living in a totally isolated system would construct the same knowledge about what is acceptable behavior as would a female living in a so society comprised of tight knit clan units with matrilineal inheritance <laughs> b the near universal dominance of males in war and combat situations across time and in various cultures is mere coincidence unlinked to any underlying biological phenomena answer choice c the association of the color blue with the clothing and bedrooms of baby boys results in increased testosterone production in the adrenal cortices of infant boys. And then answer choice D, our final pick. The tendency of women in the workplace to use consensus building as the best problem solving approach is a consequence of females being told that it is important to, quote, be a good girl, end quote, while growing up. Wow. Um, so I'm going to potentially take some outside knowledge here and get rid of C, uh, because blue is not always the color for boys <laughs> that switched like a hundred years ago. Uh, pink used to be the color for boys and blue for girls. So I'm going to throw out C <laughs> with the hope that that outside knowledge, uh, is going to help me on the MCAT. Um, I have no idea what social constructionism is. And so for me to try to understand like the critique of gender uh, for social constructionism, let's, let's use the word, right? Social. Um, answer choice A and D seem to be more quote social in terms of what they're talking about than answer choice B, which is the, the one on war. So I'm gonna get rid of B as well. So this this is my my way to get rid of questions uh, or answer choices without actually knowing anything. So hopefully this is working. I'm down to 50-50. Um, uh, answer choice A, a single female living in a totally isolated system would construct the same knowledge about what is acceptable behavior as would a female living in a society comprised of tight knit. Like that answer choice to me just doesn't seem logical. Like why would someone living alone in, in outside of any sort of construct come up with the same fake construct of living with other people? And so that one to me just doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna go with D for that reason. Yeah, and you would be right. Um, and that's an excellent way to actually go about this question. and. And pretty similar to what I did. I, I didn't have that awesome outside knowledge that uh, pink actually used to be the the quote unquote boys color. Yeah. Um, but I just looked at that and like whether you remember like what social construction is, like hey, it's social. <laughs> um, and so I got rid of B and C because they're starting to talk about like science and biology, yep. and this is like a social thing, not a science um, thing. So those just seemed odd. And then yeah, A seemed weird because totally isolated, like system and that's like we're talking social and so that seems like interaction with other people is important and so how would someone who does no interaction have the same knowledge compared to someone who does have societal interaction yeah. so a yeah, it just seemed weird to me as well uh and then d absolutely that is going to be the the correct answer dude i i need to go i need to go take the mcat crushing <laughs> Question. <laughs> All right. Um, question 16. Uh, and this is a hard one potentially described for the podcast, but we'll do our best. When asked to describe the image below, 
a small child says, quote, a smiley face. And what we see is some dotted lines, a big circle uh, with uh, dotted um, vertical ovals, which look like eyes, and then a dotted kind of smile. It looks like a, uh, a smile emoji, uh, just all dotted lines here. Which of the following is the gestalt principle of perception that the child is demonstrating by perceiving the image as a smiling face rather than a series of disconnected dots? A, law of closure, B, law of symmetry, C, law of similarity, or D, law of proximity? So again, I have no clue what the gestalt principle is, right? I have not studied my psychosexin. Um, but I'm going to say answer choice C, law of similarity. A answer choice A seems like it's it's too too easy of an answer. Like, oh, I'm closing the dotted lines. Like, that just seems like it's just too good to be true. Uh, and I'm sure that's a that's one that a lot of students potentially choose, assuming I'm right and that's not the right answer. Law of symmetry doesn't really make sense because dotted lines, this has nothing to do with symmetry, I don't think. Uh, and then law of proximity, potentially that's the answer because proximity in terms of, oh, well, it's close to a smiling face. Uh, but I'm going to say it's a lot of similarity for that reason, right? It's it's very similar to what I would see in a smiling face. And so I'm going to say C. Gotcha. Your gut instinct was, for A is actually going to be <laughs> oh, maybe the right answer. It oh. is too easy, but it's not too easy to be true. Yeah. Bummer. <laughs> All right. It, it looked too good to be true. And sometimes <laughs> sometimes they are the right answer. And I think with all these like gestalt principles, like really studying them, like yeah, there's definitions, but look, there's like pictures you can find that go along with them. And it is makes it way more easy to understand than okay. just reading the words. Um, if anyone's like struggling with uh, these principles, uh, go look up some pictures that explain or give examples of these. All right. Thanks, Gestalt. <laughs> All right. Question 17, last one of this discrete part. All righty. Which of the following interactions would be a negative consequence of ethnocentrism? A, a mother teaches her daughter only about her own cultural and religious traditions. B, an employer gives his employees days off for cultural holidays of his own culture. C, a father discourages his son from playing with children who are not members of their culture. Or D, an older brother beats up his younger brother for mispronouncing words associated with their own religious traditions. So it seems like this should be an easy question and answer. But where I'm struggling is, is the question of what's a negative consequence of this, of this ethnocentrism. So ethnocentrism, right, focusing on your own ethnicity and culture. Um, so answer choice A, a mother teaches her daughter only about her own culture and religious traditions, right? That to me doesn't seem like a negative consequence. That's just... It just happened. I, I don't know if I'm I'm reading into negative consequence too much, trying to uh, figure that out. Uh, B, an employer gives his employees days off for cultural holidays of his own culture. To me, that seems like a negative consequence to the employee, um, right? The employer only focusing on the employer's own culture. So B seems potentially good. C, a father discourages his son from playing with children who are not members of their own culture. Again, to me, I, like, obviously big picture that's negative because we need people to interact with each other, but I, I don't see a negative consequence there for the son other than he, he misses playing with other kids. Maybe that is the negative consequence. And then D, an older brother beats up his younger brother for mispronouncing words associated with their own religious traditions. Like, that to me is like more of a negative consequence than anything else, right? You're actively getting beat up for, uh, for mispronouncing something. And so D is very intriguing as well. Uh, but I'm going to go with B because I don't know, that's just the one that grabbed me first. Gotcha. 
This is a tricky question. Um, <laughs> the correct answer choice is actually going to be C. Oh. Um, and yeah, it almost feels like a little bit of a of a judgment call on that negative consequence. Um, but you kind of have to like logically think through the answer choices. Uh, I, I first of all get rid of D um, because I focus on anthrocentrism first, like that kind of belief that your culture is superior to others. Um, and A, like I can see how that relates to anthro, uh, ethnocentrism, uh, similarly with B and C, but D, there's nothing in D that talks about that religious tradition being like better or more superior to others. Um, and so D definitely seems negative, like getting beat up, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't tie into that ethnocentrism. So I, I get rid of D and then. Yeah, I feel the same way for A. Like, yeah, that happens, but that's not necessarily negative. Um, she's the mother's not forbidding her daughter to learn about these other traditions. She's just not teaching other ones to her daughter, which I feel like is pretty normal. Mm. Uh, and then B and C, the difference that really stands out logically to me, which this kind of hinges on, is that B, the employer isn't stopping his employees from taking off uh, days for their own mm. culture. So the employer is giving off, giving like his important days, um, but those employees may be like, oh, this is like a free day off. Um, I still get my holidays uh, that are important to, to my culture, whether that's religious or um, just cultural. But I also get these like bonus days because my employer <laughs> has a, maybe a different culture. Yeah. Um, where C, you have that father like explicitly discouraging the son from doing something they may want to do. Yeah. Um, and so B, you don't have the employer stopping them, uh, the employees from doing something they want to do. Um, and you would need to have that like explicitly stated yeah. that they, he didn't allow them to take their own holidays. Nice. All right. So real clear delineation there when you add that in definitely makes sense. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, getting getting super nitty gritty with really understanding what are what are these words mean. That's that's the tricky part with psychos knowing all these definitions mm -hmm. and then implementing them. <laughs> yeah, a lot to remember. <laughs>